Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. And a reminder always for myself and of the Kulaji Sutaifu, Miskinu, Zalim, Jahad. And by the grace of Allah that I am still in existence. We took a path in which to be nothing. Alhamdulillah, Allah's greatest ni'mat, blessings, favors is if Allah guides. He guides the servant to the well of realities. Last month was the month of Surat al Yaseen, the fourth lunar month, with the power of nine from these awliyaullah, and that was a journey into the heart. And everything has a heart and everything has a source of its love, its soul, its reality, the heart of Islam and the heart of Qur'an is Surat al Yaseen. And that is the name of Sayyidina Muhammad that that secret, that reality that Allah a hidden treasure wanting to be known and is known through Muhammadun Rasulullah and that is the greatest gift of Allah the khans, the treasure of Allah is the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad And this is a journey into that Divine reality and all the turuqs should be built on the way of love and muhabbat. And in this holy hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad when you just Google, the hadith of be with whom you love, narrated by Sayyidina Anas, a man asked Sayyidina Muhammad about the hour, the day of judgment, saying, when will the hour be? And Sayyidina Muhammad what have you prepared for it? Said, what have you prepared for it? And the man said, nothing. It's <laughs> like Prophet nothing except that I love Allah and His Apostle Sayyidina Muhammad And the reply from Sayyidina Muhammad you'll be with whom you love. Said, we have never been so glad as when we were hearing that and sayings of, the say of Sayyidina Muhammad that you'll be with whom you love. Therefore I love Prophet Abu Bakr, Omar and I hope to be with them because my love for them is so intense but my deeds are not similar to theirs. That I'm not going to be with them because of my deeds. But this was a news from Sayyidina Muhammad to his companions and all the generations that would come to Islam. He gave a tremendous ni'mat and a key. He gave a key that you be with whom you love. One warning is make sure you love the right people. If in life you have a fellowship of crooks and you say, well, no, I'm, I'm pious and say, look at your friends and I'll tell you who you are. You can't be around bad people saying, I'm going to one day be in paradise with good people because Prophet is warning, this, this heart of ours and this gift that God gave to us is a magnet and if you release the magnet upon not correct people, you will be with them and raised amongst them on the Day of Judgment. But the good key for those whom trying their best and struggling with the good and the bad, Allah ni'mat and blessings is that you'll be with whom you love. If Allah guides us to love those whom Allah's pleased with, and our deeds are short and our deeds are not strong and maybe weakened, this is an immense gift, an immense gift. The depth of it within the secret of al-wadud that Allah created all of this creation from love. Love is a, is a bond that holds everything together. 
every atom is held with a bond and that secret of that bond is Sifat al-Wadud. Its magnetic pull to the nucleus is its ishq and love. Strong and weak nuclear attraction, attraction. It even uses the word in science. It's attracted to the nucleus, means there's an ishq there. Its centrifugal movement because of its love and not being able to reach, they explain from the atomic reality so we just understand our physical reality. A centrifugal movement because of its love and it can't enter and it can't enter, it teaches us our path. Don't stop in your love for Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad Your love must overtake you in which there's nothing that will stop you from reaching that reality and that becomes the reality of our electrons. Their centrifugal movement is they're spinning so fast, so fast, so fast trying to enter. And they can't enter and they keep spinning, 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 they're lost in their ishq. And they spin at a, an immense speed, some now witnessing that when they spin they vanish and then they appear again the electrons. Means that everything that we are built from is this Divine Love. And they come into our life teaching that you'll be with whom you love. So then the turuqs were not the houses of fiqr and rules, you learn it. What was we said in, in the, in the ishq songs that we were listening to? Nafiqi. You asked last night. Uh, it's not a place that we, we're, we're debating laws and rules and you think by, by grasping all the rules you're going to enter anywhere. No, this is uh, the house is saqi, is dispensing love. His responsibility is to dispense an immense nectar of this Divinely love and they gather for that love, they come together for that love. And the shaykhs are supposed to teach them about love. The love of Allah and the reality of loving Allah is that you have to love Sayyidina Muhammad more than we love ourselves. Then when they sit in those associations they become in an intoxicated state of love by the recitations that are reciting. Some come new and they're wondering, why are they reciting so long? Because those whom intoxicated they are being given an energy, an elixir that is dressing them and blessing them in a way that people can't understand. There's something happening in the recitations, there's energies that are flowing in these recitations, they become heated. They come energized, this is a food upon their soul, these are the oceans of muhabbat. And that if you can make the bond of this love, if you make the connection of this love, every fires and every light and every emanation begin to dress upon the servant. Their love attracts. When the people come with that love, with that heart, with their good characteristic, it's but an atom of you that will be pulled on to that person's soul. And that's why Allah from the heart of Qur'an, everything related from Surat al-Yaseen is about the secret of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad yeah. We carried them in a loaded ship and we khalaq no mislahum. There are big loaded ships, big fuluks. Their souls are like ships, 
big. And everywhere they go through the juzba of their soul, they collect the atoms of people. Don't need the whole of you, just one drop of your light. Like this light bulb coming out with LEDs is not a good example anymore. But regular light bulb it diffuses light. As soon as we enter into this association our souls are all diffused together. The size of your soul is not limited to your body, actually larger than the, if you were to stick out your head to the planet earth. If they release the size of their soul the earth can be in their hand. It's immensity in size, it's not compared to like something that we think it's limited to the body. Our lights are everywhere. When we walk into this room we're all diffused into an ocean of light. And for these awliyaullah they were taught with this love they have Allah Prophet make their souls like fuluq, like a ship. Everywhere they go they collect souls. You know the SOS, save our soul. It's all the terminology of ships and captains. Why? When Allah describing the ship and how we made the ship to sail its course that it's astonishing how a ship stays above water means the miraculous nature of this soul and how it collects the energy of everything it experiences and everywhere it goes. And that's everyone. Everyone you meet has an effect upon your soul. Everywhere you go has an effect upon your soul. If you take your soul after a nice beautiful zikr or jummah or after you've done something very good and cleansing, walk into the mall. You become so heavily loaded and then you'll understand what fulqul mashkhum means. You're an energy being. If you take that positive charge and positive energy and immediately go into somewhere negative, if you've done a lot of practices you'll see your eyes immediately become red because they pulled in so much negativity from people. You feel yourself being heated, some people feel their feet in pain just because they're walking into so much negativity. Just to understand that no we are big and powerful energy beings. So then these shaykhs, these guides of muhabbat and love, they're like a big ship. Everywhere they go they're collecting the lights of people. It's enough just for an atom of somebody to be on their ship and then they teach it attaches itself strongest with muhabbat, not with rules, not with laws. Laws and rules are somewhere else you go to learn and they use your head and that's why you think all you want but you don't love your professor. And whatever he taught you you're really not sort of in love with it. It was something you memorized in school. So they use their aql for their dunya but they use their qalb for their akhirah. As soon as they come and they have a sense of that love, a sense of, of that respect, a sense of the association, a sense of the teachings and the realities, immediately their soul is bonded and attached. When they make that attachment they now can be dressed from that reality. And that's why we said last night wherever the ship goes, it goes with all the lights of all of the people. It pleads upon all of the people who are present. It is the secret of muhabbat that governs everything. And these awliyaullah that were in the ziyarat that we went, some are the kings of muhabbat. That Allah gave an immense reality of al-wadud and sifat al-wadud. I hold all this creation together with love. Whom I dressed with love and muhabbat, they're not like normal people. It's not a sifat, it's in from Allah's garden there are millions of flowers. 
every wilayat has its different secret. But the wilayat of wadud and muhabbat is immense in the origin of creation. This creation is held together by that sifat al-wadud, this sifat of love, this sifat al-muhabbat and it blossoms with its good character and good manners. That's why it's a school of good character and good manners so that people don't do bad, they don't disagree, they don't argue, they don't open their mouth to things. They teach them, have good character, good character so that this, the entire training in the school is to agitate and agitate and agitate so that you identify all your incorrect characteristics so that the supremacy of love can be just upon the servant. It's not a school in which to engage the mind and keep talking to the mind. It's a school in which to teach you that you have to be put into a bag and you shake the bag. Shake it, shake it, shake it until we find out what really aggravates us, what makes us to become angry, what makes us to become uncomfortable, what makes us to become agitated. And it's not to relieve it but it's to understand, why is this happening to me? And my Lord give me patience and good character to endure because it's a school of love. Allah wants the badness and the bad character to be brought down so this completion of this sifat al-wudud can begin to dress the servant and bless the servant. These only Allah they know their name from Ayatul Qur'an al-Kareem. Everybody has a name, it's secret in the Holy Qur'an. Most of them from Surat al-Rahman, these are Ibad al-Rahman. These awliyaullah who know themselves, they know they're from Surat al-Rahman. They know their name within Surat al-Rahman. Most of Naqshbandiya, their secret of their soul is from Lulul wal Marjan. Did I pronounce it right? Lulu? The pearls and corals. Their reality in which Allah created them from an ancient reality manifesting its secret and power from Holy Qur'an. When Allah says, was there ever a time you were something not known? When he brought their souls into existence, he made its source of power and its reality from Surat, from Holy Qur'an. These Ibadul Rahman, most of which from Surat al-Rahman. Many Naqshbandiya from Lulul wal Marjan. When Allah describes that, you are the treasures of Allah's oceans of Rahman. This Safat al-Rahman in the ocean of Surat al-Rahman is a reality of the treasures of Allah's oceans of realities. And under the authority of Mawlana Shah Naqshband who is given authorities of these lulu pearls, lulu lemon, yeah, lulu is the pearl. Is given authority under the reality of these pearls. There's a reality in an ocean, spiritual ocean, that when they go down into that ocean, that Mawlana Shah Naqshaban is making a zikr of who on an infinite number, and they look like oysters with a pearl inside. And they witness it in their khalwa. They witness. Mawlana Shah Naqshaban making the zikr of who upon these lul. Lulu or lul? Lulu. 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 Sounds different than lulu. <laughs> so this lulu, Mawlana Shah Naqshaban making his zikr of who in his ruhaniyat. 
and his responsibility, the responsibility of the souls of these awliyaullah immense. One responsibility was making the zikr and keeping his nazar upon those realities. Its power, those souls whom destined under that reality, its power from Surat Al Rahman that Allah give from an unimaginable reality upon that soul. And every treasure lies within that pearl. And their objective is in their seclusion and their training to reach to that reality so that Mawlana Shah Naqshaban will put that pearl into their chest. At that time they carry the trust in which Allah has destined for them. These are oceans of immense muhabbat, immense love in which Allah dresses that servant and those servants with the reason for all love that all creatures, everything Rabbul Mu'mineen wa Rabbul Kafireen that everything is created from Allah's oceans of muhabbat. Every creature is created from that love, everything is in existence by that love. And all they want is not the rules of right and wrong but just to follow. And that's why his saying was, come, come, come again. Even you broke your vow a thousand times, still come again. They don't need your actions. If you're not going to listen to Allah and you're not going to listen to Sayyidina Muhammad you're most definitely not going to listen to any shaykh either. If they're not listening to Allah why they want to listen to you? So it wasn't the school of teaching people to listen and all the rules, it was a school of muhabbat. So it means Allah has a certain secret amongst certain awliya that you walk the earth and you teach about love. If they should come into your proximity and they begin to open their heart towards you it's enough for that love to reach them. If that love reach them, they lift them in an instant, doesn't take but a blink of an eye. It's but one shout and they're in Divinely Presence. Not by the actions that you do if you live a thousand lifetimes. Allah's ni'mat upon this earth is something that can't be imagined. People say, no, no, we were talking in my office the other day, the natural inclination for people is that they don't feel good unless their paradise is based on somebody being in hell. I said, I don't want to have a paradise unless I know everybody else is in hell. If you go around telling people who are practicing a lot, if you tell them, no there's no hell, everybody's going to be in paradise, they get very angry with you, why? All the people who did bad, they have to go to hell because law of opposites. They, they feel happier thinking they got somewhere that nobody else got. So everything on this earth is based on somebody has to be punished and I'm going to be rewarded. Somebody has to be brought down and I'm going to be brought up. The concept of everybody being brought up is like, no that's not fair. Why did I struggle in life and I'm going to get paradise? That one has to be punished. But they're not like that, Allah not like that. The one whom destined to be punished there must be a wali, there must be only a sign to lift them and save them for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad For the sake of that love there must be somebody assigned to save them. If they didn't save them on this earth they will enter into the grave to save them. And that's not something difficult. Just a beginner wali can enter into a graveyard and see all the souls in that graveyard. He can sit into the graveyard and begin to make zikr and all of them come to take their shahada. That's not something difficult. The people of the grave are not going anywhere. 
They don't do that because then all those people out of the grave start to follow them home. <laughs> like a movie. You got 10,000 people from the graveyards coming to your house to sit with you now all day long. <laughs> Allah's immensity and love is something that can't be imagined. The rules all have to be obeyed because from love, what Allah gave to us out of ihtiram and respect, we do what Allah ordered us as a sign of our love. But these are the houses of ishq and muhabbat. With this ishq and muhabbat it humbles us that when we enter into these associations, enter into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rasul Kareem, we're not coming with our actions. We're only coming with our love that accept this serenading, accept these recitations like a gule bulbul, like the little birds. How beautiful they are when the parrots get together and they all start to sing. You don't take out something and start throwing rocks at the parrots unless you're crazy but <laughs> you don't try to do that because it's such a beautiful expression of love. So imagine then we're all lining up to praise upon Sayyidina Muhammad That is the secret of this way. We pray that Allah inspire us more and more for this way of ishq and this way of understanding to have good character and muhabbat only grows within the heart and the, and the form of good character. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Every time you recite Surat al-Rahman is a tremendous energy upon the soul, especially of the Naqshbandi murids because of Mawlana Shah Naqshban's reality upon that surah. That as soon as they recite from Surat al-Rahman there's a tremendous energy that dresses their reality. And especially when they come to that Ayatul Kareem of Lulul. <laughs> Lulul? Lulul. Allah bless you, inshaAllah we start the Khatmi Khalch again. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.